it's Reagan and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be doing my June book haul. Now for the month of June I have bought so many books. In fact a lot of them haven't even arrived yet so just anticipate my July book haul also being a very large one. Here's the thing, I'm not even sorry about it because I bought one a lot of amazing books, I've supported a lot of amazing bookstores and all of those things so I'm honestly really happy with my giant book haul and I'm really excited to show you some of the titles that I have for you guys today. First and foremost I still of course have a bunch of links down below, petitions, ways to help, places to donate so please Check all those out below, watch videos, donate if you can, sign petitions, educate yourself. Um, so that's the first thing I wanted to call out. And the other thing I wanted to quickly address is my relationship with Book of the Month. I did already address this on Instagram, but I wanted to quickly mention it in a video as well. But I have put a halt on my relationship with them in a sponsored capacity based on how they handled their social media response to the Black Lives Matter movement. Book of the Month has in general been really open to feedback and I know myself and a bunch of other creators and community members have been sending them a lot of information information over email and they've been very receptive to it um, and they've also come out with a list of actions they plan to take as a company which I'll leave a link to that down below if you're interested in seeing it. For me personally I just wanted to announce I'm still continuing to halt my partnership with them until I see some of those actions actually taken so I'll definitely be watching them and seeing how they kind of continue to respond moving forward but I did just want to be transparent and address that at the front of this video but now let's jump into the books that I have bought, which are a lot of them. Most of them I purchased through indie bookstores. There's actually an online way to do this through bookshop.org, which I'll also leave linked down below, lots of links. But it's a great site to be able to buy online and support indie bookstores. And I personally have been focusing on black owned bookstores. But yeah, let's jump into the books. So the first book I'm gonna feature is A Song of Wraiths and Ruin by Roseanne A. Brown. This was one of my most anticipated books of the year. And you guys, I've already read this. This is not a wrap up, but I am gonna say this book was absolutely incredible. It blew me away. I feel like it was marketed as a love to hate romance, which this definitely does have. And it's great. But this also is just truly an epic YA fantasy story that's a dual perspective following Karina and Malik basically set at the ultimate odds against each other and both having to go through such trials and tribulations and such a wonderfully crafted political magical world and I just die. I loved it so much. But specifically, as I said, dual perspective story. We follow Malik who is fleeing his home uh, to travel to a new city with his sisters to try to start a new life. In entrance to the city though, he has to make a bargain with this sort of magical individual. And when he does, his sister is kidnapped. And the only way that he can get his sister back is if he kills the crown princess, Karina. Cut to our other main character who is said crown princess, Karina. Um, at the beginning of the story, her mother is assassinated. She's sort of thrown in the midst of a lot of politics and essentially she decides that she is gonna to try to resurrect her mother from the dead. And to do this though, she needs the beating heart of a king. Enter how their worlds clash together. This book is set on sort of the beginning of a giant festival uh, celebrating around this comet. And um, there are a bunch of trials that occur during this festival and Malik enters them and is selected to enter them and the winner gets to marry Karina. So they're kind of, their fates are very much intertwined. This is a really intense, fast paced story full of wonderful characters, incredible politics, so, so good. But yeah, pick this up. What am I most anticipated? Did not disappoint. S read this book, basically is what I'm trying to say. Next book I got is A Song Below Water by Bethany C. Morrow. This is a urban fantasy mermaid centered story set in Portland. And it is said to be a story for today's reader, a captivating modern fantasy about black mermaids, friendship and self discovery set against the challenges of today's racism and sexism. I love mermaid centered fantasy stories. There's something about the siren's tale set on the seashore and sort of this like, mermaid folklore that I always love. Because of that, this book honestly captured my attention. Mermaids tend to be an auto buy for me. I've heard fantastic things about this book. It's really not very long, so I feel like this would be a perfect like readathon read for me, because um, I just feel like I'm gonna fly through it. But yeah, grab this as well. Love mermaid books, what can I say? Next book I bought was because of Starla, who has an amazing booktube channel. I have her link down below as well. I saw her read this in her May wrap up and I immediately bought it because it just sounded incredible. And she loves so many fantasy series that I love. So I just implicitly trust her taste so much. And the book is Upon a Burning Throne. And this book just sounds so 
magical, which is always a keyword for me when it comes to fantasy, but this is an epic fantasy retelling of a traditional Indian folk story. It's an intensely political story, again, multiple perspectives, and it's it kind of has a complicated synopsis in that there's a lot going on, which is not a determined for me because I love political-centered fantasy. But it's essentially set in a world where demigods and demons walk the earth. And at the beginning of the story, the king has died and there's essentially a crisis of succession. There are two princes that they don't really view, view very fit to rule, but obviously one of them does, as well as a girl kind of appears um, who could also technically rule. No one really likes any of them, but they're all chosen by the burning throne, so they all technically could succeed the throne as well. I think all of this is set of those three people fighting for power, and again, this is an epic story, so I believe this is book one to probably multiple books. I'm really excited to have it in my possession, and I'm hoping to read it the next couple of months. Next book I have is Children of Virtue and Vengeance by Tomi Adeyemi. This is book two to the Children of Blood and Bone series, which I read a few years ago and really enjoyed. This is a West African-inspired fantasy story that has multiple perspectives. It mostly follows our main character, Zelly, who lives in a world where magic was essentially killed off by this evil king, and her and her people have been kind of trying to keep their heads down and survive. However, at the beginning of the story, Zelly is given an opportunity to go on a quest to bring magic back. So that's kind of the premise of the first one. There's like princes and romance and angst and drama and magic and all of that. I really liked it and I honestly need to reread it, but the sequel came out late last year and I've been meaning to pick it up. So I finally did. Um, so I'm excited to reread that and finally get to this sequel. I really loved the first one. So you know. Next up, I do have a few ebooks I quickly want to cycle through. The first two books I'm going to feature are both anti-racism, uh, nonfiction that I picked up for the Blackout Buddy Read, which was put on by Books with Shay. It occurred earlier this month, but I read them for that. For me personally, these are both like pieces to the larger puzzle of my like broader education that I plan to continue to read. So these are not the only books I plan to read, just the first two I happen to pick up. But the books are White Fragility and White Rage. Uh, again, I read both of these already. They were very educational. I took a lot from both of these books. Um, if you're looking to learn more, there are a lot of great booktubers on this platform with a bunch of anti-racism education videos, which I'll link down below. I've watched many of them and they were great resources for me, so I'm going to point you in the direction of those videos. But I did read and pick up both of these books for that buddy read, so I did want to quickly feature them. And the last ebook I picked up this month is Grave Peril by Jim Butcher, which is book three to the Harry Dresden series, which I have been reading throughout the past couple months. This third book I'm actually really interested in. Uh, a lot of people say it's really where the series takes off. The Harry Dresden series, is that what it's called? Um, is one of Jim Butcher's really earliest works. So the first couple I hear are just okay, but the series really begins to pick up um, and get better and better with each book. So I'm really holding out on that, holding everyone to that. But yeah, I picked up the third book in anticipation of reading it soon. This one I think has to do with probably like ghosts or zombies based on the name. Um, you know, that's what I'm inferring here, but overall I'm liking this. I love a wizard detective set in Chicago kind of story. They're really easy to read, which is one of the reasons why I like reading them. Like I fly through them. There's something about them. Um, so they're just like easy, which I enjoy. So yeah, I picked up the third one. Next book I have to show off is American Street. Um, this is a novel I've heard exceptional things about, and I'm also trying to push myself to read more contemporary fiction. I obviously read a lot of fantasy on this channel, which definitely is not going to change but I want to read more contemporary fiction um, because there's just so many books to read and I just should read them is basically what I'm saying. But those are main character Fabiola who immigrates with her mother from Haiti to the United States in search of the American dream. However, things aren't quite going as she anticipated as upon entry into the United States, her mother is detained by US immigration, leaving our main character to navigate her loud US cousins and the west side of Detroit by herself. And it says, just as she finds her footing in this strange new world, a dangerous proposition presents itself. Fabiola must learn that freedom comes at a cost. So this is said to be a coming of age story. It also, as I mentioned, has magical realism elements as I think it combines Haitian voodooism within this narrative as well. I've heard really fantastic things about this novel. Um, so yeah, I picked it up and I hope to read it soon. Next book is one of my most anticipated books of the year as well, and that is My Calamity Jane by Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadow. This is the third book in this sort of Jane series where, uh, where they're sort of reimagining historical figures named Jane, <laughs> breaking the fourth wall sort of narration style. Particularly, this is actually set in the United States and it follows, I believe, like 
a Jane who is an outlaw versus the previous two was a Jane Eyre retelling and like a queen. So this is definitely a very different setting and I'm really excited about it. Yeah, I'm excited to read this. I hope Calamity Jane takes down some outlaws, saves the day. I hope this is really fun and funny. So yeah, I'm excited to pick it up. I'm excited to have it on my shelves. This is one I was looking forward to. Next book I have here is The Hollow Crown by Jeff Wheeler. This is the fourth book to the King Fountain series, which I have been reading throughout this year. I've been really liking this fantasy series and I've been kind of reading the books really quickly. So I just wanted to make sure I have this fourth one on hand. Obviously not gonna read the synopsis of this because spoilers, but this is a really nice traditional fantasy story following our main character, Owen. We follow him from childhood through adulthood. It's a really sweeping uh, political centered fantasy story with really classic elements of like military conflict as well. I don't know, I've really liked it. It feels very old school in a way that I like, but it's also very easy to read as well. But yeah, I picked up the fourth book, happy to have it on hand. These books are not that long either, so I read them so fast. And the last three books I got this month are all part of the same series. Um, and it's it's this guy here it is the Ship of Magic series by Robin Hobb. No, it's the Live Ship Trader series by Robin Hobb. Obviously, I am reading the Farseer trilogy right now, and I'm hopefully reading the third book soon. Um, given that, I wanted to make sure I had the next trilogy on hand, which I believe follows a whole new set of characters, like a whole different adventure, but just existing within the same world. I'm avoiding reading the synopsis because I don't want to spoil myself for the third book in the Farseer trilogy. That being said, I did have to buy the UK editions of these because the US ones don't match the US ones of these, which really bothered me. So the UK ones are very similar. Like, they give off the same vibe. I'm not sure in the order of these, but I'm just gonna quickly show them off. The first I have is Ship of Magic. Then I have Ship of Destiny. And lastly, I have The Mad Ship. I feel like I'm on a constant quest for good pirate-centered fantasy. Pirates and dragons are two things that I want to really love. Harder time finding books that like perfectly showcase them. I, I have found books and I love books that have done it, but I'm like very particular about the execution. So there's a lot of books that I've read that I've just found okay. Like for example, Priory of the Orange Tree with dragons. But anyway, I'm hoping this is just a really great pirate fantasy or like seafaring fantasy um, because I, I want to love more than I do is what I'm trying to say. Alrighty guys, those are all the books I bought in the month of June that I have on hand. Again, I've bought a lot more that are coming later. So I will show them off next month, uh, many of which I'm very excited for. Lots of pre-orders, lots of new books. It's gonna be a great time. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you soon with another one soon. Goodbye.